Lionel, 671s. I got three of them here. I gotta fix one, and I get the other two for fixing the first one. Yeah, this nice guy named Dave. He set me up with these things, wants to get one of these fixed. Let's take a quick look at all these here before I move them from my thumbnail page. Just where I set up and shot the thumbnail at. Right on the old desk. So this one here is a 1952. It's a 671 RR. This is a Type 2 because it's got the 671 that's and it just says RR right underneath there. This is the one we're going to be fixing. This is the one that Dave wants to keep. And it does have its original 2046 W-50 whistling tender. And then we're going to go back to the 671. This is a 1952. It's a Type 1 because it's just got the leftover. It's got the, and you can see this hole right through here, right there, right there. That's where the magnet traction would be if it was there, but it ain't, so that's what makes this that. This one, heavier, it doesn't have that hole right down through there. So this is a 671 Type 7 from 1948. This one has the wrong tender. If it did have the correct tender, there'd be a 6-axle, 12-wheel, whistling, Pennsylvania, 2671W. Mwah! would be that. We got three tenders. We got three locomotives. Dave wants me to fix this one and this tender. And then I get to keep these other two, you know, for parts or for my layers. <laughs> that's, that's my kind of deal right there. I can live with that. Yeah. Well, let's get started on this here. 671. We are going to have screws underneath here. Let's get these trucks out of the way. One for cleaning them up and for lubrication. Ugh, yeah. Scub, scub, scub. Front one, same game plan. Being kind of a hassle. Get the shell off. A bolt here, bolt here, a bolt up here. Bolt, machine screws, they're machine screws. Two in the back are longer. The one in the front is shorter, tapered. Uh-huh, we got a what do we got going on in here? We got a smoker that's not where it belongs. Why is it not not on anything? The light bulb, no light bulb. The boiler cover of this thing does come out. So here we got a body that can get all scrubbed up. Toothbrush, some Dawn dish soap, gentle, gently cleaning. Oh, there's destructions back here. So this is to remove the whitish smoke. Deposit from locomotive body, apply a little Lionel lubricant or petroleum jelly and polish with a soft, clean cloth. Who knew? Unbelievable. Get this front truck out. We can turn it, remove it. This is sitting in here doing its thing. There's a spring underneath of it, which it seems like most of the spring is, it's missing. This, this would sit on here and as the wheels go around, this puffer goes up and down. That thing is hammered. But I'm thinking it had a screw in it like this. So it would work, yeah, like that. And we're missing the screw that held that on. Wish it was inside there somewhere. Pop this screw out right here. That'll get our E unit up out of the way. So we have a light smoker. This is our main pickup from down below right there. We're gonna get the soldering iron heating up because we're gonna take that wire off. So we can pull all the electrics out all at once. Pull these two off back here to get this motor out of the way. We got little split washers down inside there. Ugh, look at that filthy worm drive. What is this doing? Is it just here as a cover? Yeah, filth. So our motor lines up on these pin, these dowels right here. Good connections there for the ground to take place. Oh, guess we don't have to desolder that one wire just broke gotta take it all out here's a screw down here that's letting this f this little flipper flip 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 he come out this screw and washer was retaining it in just over here kind of on the bottom of it to get these pickups out of the way screw number two don't forget about these little guys right here it'll throw you off if you find them floating around them insulators, such. Everything's just dirty, dirty. This is an insulator right here. 
I don't think that wire is actually, oh, it's, is it even soldered on? It's got something, but it ain't much. And there is our stripped out chassis. I don't want to take these wheels off. There's no reason. There's no reason to take these side rods off. So this just drives from this single gear back here. This is what makes this one different from the earlier versions. The earlier versions, the motor sat in here horizontally, completely flat. There was a drive line in there. This one is set up like this. Now I'm told that this has got bearings on both ends of it. Bearings as in like loose ball bearings. Just feel like a guy wants to see them. Are they gonna splash out all over? I mean, we gotta get the brushes out. They're dirty. Screw number two. Oh, this is, that's got a lot of soldering going on right there. I don't think, oh geez. This is made out of Bakelite. So it's super fragile, of course. Little bits by little bits. I'm not sure what's really holding it tightly. First time going in here, you know, for me. Oh, this brush cover is just a brush cover. I see that this electromagnetic wire is soldered up right here. We might as well get it out of there because the brush cover is not going to come off anyway with this soldered up. Them guys, they love to twist the wires around everything and then solder it. The factory people. Yes. Yes. A little more. Jesus. That just seemed excessive. Oh my God. Oh, oh God, jeez. That is really, really filthy. Holy moly. These brushes are actually, they're, they're kind of stuck in the brush holders. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, <laughs> okay. All that grease and oil on there, the brushes are black. So, oh my, my, my. We are going to Q-tip it. We are going to odorless mineral spirits it. And we're going to clean up everything on it. Got me a, finally had to get a new jug. We'll refill this one. Got a serving tray right here. Give you a little bit to work off. Put this someplace where you can kick it over. I like to lay it on top of my layout, especially by something that's freshly painted. And we are just going to just Q-tip after Q-tip after Q-tip. Clean all, everything, every, every little, little thing. Grease up in here, over in here. We might get the toothbrush out and do a little scrub scrubbing, just a little bit too, but we gotta get all of this grease off. Last time I did one of these, I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and the ultrasonic cleaner will dull the paint. Or if your paint is compromised somewhere, it'll pull it off. Since these are, they're kind of valuable. Guys want them original, as original as possible. Don't damage them is what they're trying to say. So that's why we're going to very carefully and painstakingly clean this. We will see you on the other side because this is going to take a couple hours for sure. Who's this Dave that I keep talking about? You, you wouldn't believe what happened to me. I finally got myself a local guy here in town that's into trains. This is Dave. Hey, it took everybody. me like two years to find a Dave. He was selling O-scale stuff on the marketplace. And I went over there and he's got an absolute museum of treasures. Absolutely nice. Well, we've been at it for a couple of years and uh, we, we moved up to Montana and decided to get some trains for the kids under the tree and it went from there. I'd been in it before, but got out of it and now I'm back in it. And well, we're full steam ahead, as they say. <laughs> Dave's one of them fellers that's got one of them real jobs. He's a project engineer for a telecom company. So he's got the ability to go out to estate sales and buy the whole dang lot. And then, you know, like guys that do that, little cherry picking, and then puts the rest of the stuff up for sale. So guys like me can come by and buy it and fix it up. <laughs> yeah. Works out great. Works for him, yeah. So what are some of the, what's that big monster trend? The Lionel 7000? Oh, the uh, the uh, 640 watt uh, Z transformer. It's a, it's a beast of a power supply and that's what uh, we used to run with another uh, 275 watt transformer for a little bit of extra accessories and other train running. Oh, big monster. Yeah, they weigh about 28 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So what, did, you have, did you have to wire in 240 for the house? Uh, no, no, no. 240, 241. 241 whatever it takes, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> You know, the wife loves tin plates, so we started collecting some tin plate, and then uh, 
I, I've got some pre-war, some post-war, some modern, and some MTH, and uh, well, we run them all and we love them all. Focuses on the O gauge. Absolutely. So, but I told him my videos, he's, he said he had some stuff that doesn't run. I'm like, I make videos, so you can watch a video and fix your stuff. Ah, uh, why don't you fix it? I'll do you a deal. And he did. So that's why we got these 671s and we're gonna fix them up. I get a couple for my time. Oh, I also gotta fix this other one. I found this at the Oxford Antique Store. And then I was telling him about it, because I didn't buy it that day. And you know what he does? Yeah, yeah, he went down and he bought it. But that's fine, because he's gonna let me get it fixed up and running, which is all I really can do right now anyway, because I don't have a layout. So we got the Lackawanna coming up shortly down the road. We got lots of Lionel stuff. Because he's got it, he needs it fixed, saves me from having to buy it, and it just all works out. And as long as we can get them up and running again, bring them back to their old glory, get them back on the rails where they belong. Yep. Yep, I hear you. Let's uh, get back into this fixing of the 671 and see how nice it looks. Well, the Q-tip pile don't look too bad so far. Some of it's, well, okay, huh. kind of quite carbony. Let's just pop this C, this C clip out right here. I'm going to take the gamble. It is hiding right up in the nose of this thing. Okay, so there it is. There should be a washer. The washer, and then here's our bearings. And they are in a keeper. So it looks like that information that I found is good. We can now pull this out. Yeah. So we can get in here, clean all this grease out. It is hard in there. Here is our other thrust washer, ball bearings, and a shim for doing the free play on the, on the armature. I like to keep calling these rotors and guys get so mad. Oh my. So we got more cleaning to do on that right there. Little trick right here. For those that don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, this is the frame and it's got a lot of areas that's really hard to get into. This is simple green, 100%. And it's been in there, I don't know, about an hour now. If the water's cold, you can, you know, it's really coming along. I can see it. So I'm going to let this soak. So we work on this a little bit here and there and here. When I go to try to do a, a repair, I'll, I'll glean the internet a little bit and read up on stuff. And somehow I read somewhere about something that these these thrust or these ball bearings are going to be loose. Uh, maybe it's the River Aussie motors or something. I don't, somewhere in there. I found this piece of paper right here that, that is the breakdown of this particular motor. And once I seen that the thrust bearings are in a cage i knew i could take it apart and not spill stuff all over the floor and have to be digging up things that internet it it has some good information out there you just gotta google it look a hey, breakdown a 671 motor and then look for pictures that match it up yeah yeah cleaned 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 on this thing all night some of the next day Let's get back into it and see what it looks like now. Broken down into a thousand little pieces. Here's all the parts. There's there's a lot of parts that go to this thing. You know, once it's all taken apart, lots of pieces. This, it got dulled. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the simple green that's doing it or something, but it's just duller now. I did use a little brake parts cleaner. I had to spray down in here because these, these have got to, they got to spin freely. This had grease and hair wrapped around the axle shafts these things here they had grease and hair and stuff jacked around in there these little areas right here are for oiling up the journals and they were full of dirt and mud and, oh my gosh all the little pieces of course they they cleaned up pretty well so i'm getting this out of the way the motor shaft and everything cleaned up we used the old fiberglass pencil on this commutator here to polish that up to get that looking good the motor itself this part yes everything is scrubbed shiny on it this brush holder right here this was full of I don't, pieces of brush i guess it was it was bad it's all shined up now the e unit it didn't have any corrosion on it but these fingers these copper pieces in here they're dirty so we're gonna have to come by with the fiberglass pencil 
and shine these up, which takes a long time. You can see just a little bit that I've done right there. And if we roll this, you see how dirty it is right there? Don't let that drum turn. Just fiberglass pencil a little bit. Yep, and get that, this whole thing, it's gotta be clean looking. Clean, copper colored looking. So there's that. These wheels, they had grease and stuff caked up on them. So we use this right here on a low setting, about there, and you give it a spin, give it a, uh-huh. Shine up the wheels, the wheel surfaces. We had a bent axle in one of these. I think it was this one, it was like bent right at the end. So one, one wheel was just wobbling. So I got the old pliers in there and gave it a, gave it a crimp to straighten it out. The, uh, I guess this one here, it's not, you can't take these apart. They are swedged together. Here's something interesting. Remember my little trick with the, this is a boot polish brush. Not the one that you use to apply the wax, but the one that you use to polish it when you're said and done. See this side here, how it's dull looking? There, there's just no, nothing to it. And this side here, it's got a little sheen. Yeah. So you take this and you just give her, you give her some, like you're polishing up your, your good pair of leather shoes. Gonna go cut a rug at the club tonight. And when you do that, then you get that little sheen right there. Now both sides. Uh-huh. I love it. I love doing that to these because you could just get them parts. You could clean, you can make it just so almost newish. See this one here's got a lot of white. It's just it's white. And just this little bit gets it back to shining. So a guy can really work on these and get them to come around. Now the boiler shell, I worked on this last night for about half an hour, going all around it. Straightened out that dent that was in this hand railing right here. Just polish her. A little buffing, and it just brings it back around. Another odd little thing a guy tells me about, is you could take a Sharpie. You see this here where the, the turbine is at? It's got some paint missing. So if you come by with your Sharpie, and you Sharpie over, the paint missing areas but then you can see where the sharpies at the camera doesn't really pick it up but your eyeball can and oddly enough when you come through with this and give it one of these you cannot see where the sharpie was at but it still keeps it black my lighting is just so pathetic isn't that unbelievable touch these up some you're not going to repaint it of course you don't want to just take paint and go after it, and it just, it helps it. Here's a big old nick right there. Can we sit there? I mean, you can see that from across the room. It got dropped on that corner quite hard. Come down on this part here, around this cab, and then just give it a little polish, a little brush action here. And you've got to go into town locomotive here now. You know, you park this right by the door to the bar. Because ain't nobody going to pick on it. That really brings it back around. I'm absolutely shocked at that little te technique. Mm -hmm. We should stop the video real quick. Let's throw in Classic Model Trains this week's Classic Model. Do you guys know who this is? If you do, type it down below in the comments. We do this for interaction. The more you type, the more you give it thumbs up, the more YouTube is going to send out my videos to more people to maybe find and start watching. So interaction, that's what we're looking for. If you don't know who it is, hang out to the very end. I'll let you know who it is. It'll be in a subtitle down below in the, in the bottom of it. Let's get back into this. So I think that it is time to start bringing this back around. First thing we want to do is put in our pickup. Now it's obvious that this has been you know, working for 65 years, but I just want one more. One more right there. It it doesn't look like it's soldered at all. We're gonna put just a little bit of paste flux on there. The paste flux helps clean everything so that your solder will stick. It's gotta be a super clean area. Yeah, see, now I know, now I know. 
we got connection right there. There ain't no doubt in my mind. That's a good solder joint. This little sleeve here prevents it from shorting out inside the chassis. Need a little something something to hold this up off the ground. So we're not crushing all that stuff down underneath there. We've got these fancy spacers that go in. We get our rollers. Got our fancy plate right there. And we'll put in our screws. And number two going in. One thing that's important is you don't want continuity. Get your multimeter out, put it onto horseshoe mode. From the frame, the rollers, we don't, we don't want any of this here being conductive. Of course the wheels we do, because that's where it's picking up half of its juice from. And then our wire down under here, we do want continuity from the wire and the roller. Yep, and of course, nothing to ground. Super happy with that. We're gonna lube up anything if it moves. Little touches in here, little touches down in here. You want a little touch on the end of the rollers. And of course, that would need to go inside. Hold it at an angle, get that to kind of flow flow in there. We need to oil up these side rods, both sides. Then we need to try to oil up these axles that are on this locomotive. There's bushings down inside here. Lift the wheel up a little bit. Try to get a little, little oil in. See how quiet it is now already? Yeah. Do it on this side. Do it again on this side. Oh my. Now up here on the front on the smoker, you can get oil on the inside of the axle and down here on the gear you can oil it in from the inside the bushing is just here on the frame so when you oil out here you're getting dripped down this way so i'm just trying to get as much as i can you know not too much of course just enough quite happy with that one way to check if your armature is not burned out is of course with the multimeter on the horseshoe mode and you're going to measure from one segment of the commutator to the other. And you're going to measure here, 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 all the way around. This one to this one, this one to this one. All three segments are doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's a good thing. This magnet right here, you can check this winding. One of them just goes to ground. The other one's right. So that's telling us that this is working. This is working. So that motor is serviceable. We're going to get ourselves some multi-purpose synthetic grease. There's a lot of things to grease on these old Lionels. True story. I want to grease this bushing that's down inside here. Some right here. Roll around the rim right there. We got another one right here on the end of this on the inside. Some grease. This hole... That's for oiling, putting light oil down inside of it. Well, we got our open now, so we're gonna grease it. And then we have to assemble all our thrust bearings and funness like that. Now, when I took this one apart, there was a thrust down in there. What it's gonna amount to is there's gonna be one bearing, one thrust washer here. We're gonna put a little bit of grease on this and the shaft. Then we've got our bearing and it needs grease on it. And then we have another thrust washer. And this setup right here is what adjusts your end play for the armature. We want to make sure those guys are happy. Get this in. Grease out here on this end. Grease inside this bearing. Another thrust washer here. Get some grease on it. And then we can put this C-clip back on. One shot. Don't launch it across the room. And that little feller is serviced. Here's a fun fact for you right here. The turbine is a Lionel made. There's four different models. Many, many variations. But the cab numbers being 671, 681, 682, and 2020. They're all the same. They're all the same size. People think that the 2020 is the 027 version and the 671 is the O version, but that's not true. They're all the exact same size. They all can run on 27 inch track. Now the variations, 
there's different motors, there's different eras, there's some that have magnet traction, there's some that don't have magnet traction. There's, there's some that weigh more than others. There's difference in the way they printed the numbers on them. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Just thought I want to share that with you. Let's get back into it. We've got this big old gear down here. We need to get some lube on it. And I'm going to be heavy handed with it. This one's kind of an important one. The whole program is riding on it. A little there on the shaft. We got these two right here for the motor. Yes? Yes. Kind of snugged, but I do want to use the, the big boy screwdriver. So we're playing with big boy stuff here. We got to make sure that there's a sufficient amount of tightness going on. Not too tight. You don't want to strip it, but you don't want to come and loose on you either. This here's a little splash shield that goes right here to keep that grease from being all over inside the boiler shell. I thought, well, that's, that's really nice of them. I've got the wheels held and I can roll this armature back and forth. I bet you there's supposed to be some sort of shim that goes underneath this thing. There's a specification there. I just know it. Now to put our smoke flapper back in, he sits in here like this and rides on that cam that's down in there. So we want to make sure that that cam has got some sufficient amount of stuff in it too. Grease. So every time it rolls around, it's not going to wear out that cam lever. This one right here. That screw and that washer. This thing's almost, we're almost got this back on the tracks already. This is just it's really coming along. Let's tighten this up. You can see that little feller just kind of popping up and down, popping up and down. I do want to put a little bit on this because there is friction between that and then this cup right here, which is riding on it. Well, it rides on it like this. Here's a fun fact for you. I took the smoker apart because I wanted to see inside of it. And also because I broke that wire off right there or it broke off or it did something. And remember how nasty this thing looked? Well, it turns out you can get one of these here crack torches and you can warm this thing up. And when you do, it melts all that pill stuff that's in there. And of course it'll start to smoke, but it'll also loosen up the stuff, which is like, kind of like a glue, a hard, crabby old. It was kind of like undoing the solder is really what it was like. And then I got this top to come off. And now this thing's hot and I got to hold on to it until it cools off. I didn't plan that out very good at all, did I? So I got this off. Then I wire wheeled the top of it to get all the scub off because I need to try to see if I can solder a wire in. A new one right there. It can't touch the outside because it'll short out and won't work. And here's the wire that's wrapped around this insulator right here that's doing all the work. Sure, you can put a new smoke unit in. They make them. But are they going to make a stainless steel one like this from the 52 that, that's as nice as this? Probably not. So I'm going to give it everything I got to try to figure out how to get a wire down through there, soldered onto this connection right there, so I can have the original smoker unit working in this thing. I think it's about time to put the electrics in. I'm gonna clean this drum that's in here right now. I'm gonna lubricate up this, everything that moves in here just a little bit. Some people say, don't do it. I am gonna do it. They say, don't, don't lubricate this drop bar right here from this electromagnet. Well, a tiny drop's not going to hurt nobody. That's how what I think. I ain't, it ain't going to seize up. We'll get this back on, get this soldered back on, get this one soldered back on, and we'll really be somewhere by then. I just wanted to show this real fast because once it's installed, you can't even see this drum down in here. So we got everything on it all shiny so that it, you know, yes, 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 yes. Little bit of, little bit of oil here, here because you can see where the drum rotates there. A little bit of oil on this shaft under here. It's where this thing moves as it goes down and grabs that pawl up and then gets pulled up electromagnetically. And then just a drop on this electromagnetic plunger for good measure. There's the unit all cleaned up, ready to go back to work. It seems that when you got the whole thing together like this, that if you mount the unit, then there's not enough slack left over to mount the brush holder on. Oh, learning curves, learning curves. Now the motor doesn't want to be mounted up to put the brush holder on. I knew there was something, just, just things that I've missed. Not a big deal, pop the motor out. Okay, now we've got this going on. I'm gonna take a file after these 
and clean them up so that this isn't so difficult. I and mean, I really had to crank to get it off. I want to fix that first. Yep, just a little, little touch it up. It's mainly the ends. They kind of had a lip or a flare on them. Kind of rolled around here a little bit. Clean that up so this slides on and off. Nice, nice now. So I'm gonna to attempt to put the brushes in this direction first. Uh, maybe. Put this on, hello. Oh yeah. And our brushes got little lines in them. They need to be lined up with the springs to keep them from spinning. Yeah. That was easy. Third time's a charm. Two brush holder machine bolts on the back end here. Gentle snugging. Oh yeah. Now we can put the motor back in. Yep, everybody's still happy. Reversing unit in with this one here. We gotta take these wires, wrap them around this post, solder them. Here's the one, this one here is going, coming from the E unit. I guess if it's good enough for the Lionel engineers, it's good enough for me. Wrap them around there. Oh, it's so quick and fast. It is so nice having a decent soldering iron. I went so many years with just a junk one. Oh, so there's those three. Well, we're almost ready to run this. This is our pickup wire from down below. It broke a little bit. Here, God, there's just a ton of stuff soldered right here. We should almost clean all this up. Solder wick. When it gets hot, you can see that it wicks in the solder. Since there was like a huge excessive amount on there. Of course, by the time I get done with it, it'll be back there again. Obviously these three were all tied together. This is our wire going up to the smoker and we're gonna have to get that fixed. See if I can fix it. We don't want continuity from the body of it to the pickup, which currently we don't. We do want continuity across it. So working on this side. Yeah, seems like they're a little corroded. Let me work on this. Come up with an idea. Well, it looks like I was able to go through this hole. I had to drill through this connection here, put one crappy solder joint on it. And then the ground wire over here broke. So I soldered it over there and we now have got continuity through it. So that tells us that there's a chance that this is gonna work. All I gotta do is kind of sand or file this down a little bit to get it to fit back in this portion right here. And I believe this guy was sitting in there like this. Wait, no, that little filler. Make sure that this hole in the bottom right here comes all the way through. It comes up right there. And that's what makes it puff. When the puffer's puffing, you gotta have the puffer. It's gotta be lined up just right. So we're gonna fart around and get this assembled again. Probably have to clean a little bit out over here with the old We might have fixed this smoke unit. Yeah. Well, we've got the light bulb wire wired in and I found another light bulb for it. We got the smoker wired in. We've got the pickup wired in. We've got her soldered up. We got the trucks on it. I come by and lubricated all the little holes in here so they all, listen, just quiet it is. Oh my goodness. I say we put her up on the track and see what's happened. Throw a little juice to, oh, yes. Very nice. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh-huh. Yes. Wow. She didn't even run when she got here. Let's get that body put on it. It's gonna look a lot better. Look at that. The uh, body came out so nice. All the black nicks are gone. Sure. Yup, yup. Sure. Smoker smoking? Of course. Because that's the way I want it. Fix that thing up on my little short test track here. Oh. Mm, that's a pellet smoker. And it really hemorrhages too. Very, very nice. Now once I put the body on, we had one issue that came up. This pickup right here, it's hanging. It's touching the center rail. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on. 
come to find out, I took this one apart to look at it. See that those steps right there? Well, that groove, I'm trying to do this one handed. That groove right there holds that coupler up. So, and I didn't really realize that they're broken off right here until I see that. So we need, we need parts. And that original Whistler tender, this is it right here. And it shorts out when it's on the tracks. Something bad has happened to it. But we did do a video on how to repair whistling tenders. I'll throw what the thumbnail looks like up. If I got enough room here, because I'm just trying to hold the camera and... Eh, looks like this. All, they almost all fix the exact same way. They all work the exact same way. We're not going to focus on it, fixing this tender when I got one video that shows how to fix the tenders. All of them, they're all the same. Mostly. Mostly. So I figured out I need some parts. The nice thing about these line L's is that they're made to be serviced. Them, them thrust bearings that are on that motor, they're allowing that armature to scoop back and forth just a little bit too much. And it's creating a little bit, just the performance isn't quite there. I could see when I was working on them that the thrust washers themselves, not the bearings, they had a lot of time on them. There was a different, you know, ridge in there. I found a place. I found a parts guy. The place is called the Train Tender. Feller out there named Jeff Kane. He's been running it for 42 years. And he doesn't miss a second to let you know that he's been doing it that long, too. He's out in upstate New York. I don't deal with New Yorkers very much. They got it. They're not like us Midwesterners, you know, where we're all bubbly and fun and sit and invite you over for a beer on the pickup truck, you know. No. <laughs> but nice enough guy. Um, this isn't an advertisement for him. I'm just sharing this information. Guy tells me he's got two stories of Lionel parts. St I mean, lots. I'm going to order up those steps that I need for the back to hold the coupler up. I'm going to order up some new brushes. I'm going to order up some new thrust washers. We got to finish the video. We got it running, but we want it to be one more nicer. It's got a website. You can look up all the stuff by pictures. Ttender.com. Website will look like this right here when you get to the right spot. You can look up all your stuff. Heck of a nice guy. Well, you know, for New Yorkers. <laughs> oh, sorry. Three days now. Started on this on Friday night. It's now Sunday night. Just, I got to record this part right here and then I get to quit. I get to have the rest of the week off. Yeah. Yeah. We got one of these running, which I wanted to show you on the video. And I got two more I got to work on. And I don't, and some tenders. I don't, I, mean, I don't know what I'll do with them. I don't need two. Maybe we'll sell one. So we can buy, buy somebody's Bowser. He was telling me he's got a T1 Bowser he wanted to do some horse trading on out there, Dave. Now we're down to all the 33 percenters that are with us. So we get a lot of new subscribers coming along all the time and, and they, haven't, they haven't watched all the videos yet. What's a 33 percenter? Well, normally when the video starts off within the first 30 seconds, you lost 33 percent of the crowd because they're just busy, you know, it's auto playing and they didn't really want to watch it anyway or they're like, eh, what the hell? I thought this was about a real one. And they're out. And then throughout the duration of the video, you got a little bit of attrition as it takes place. About 33%, sometimes. That's about how good I am at putting the video together. But typically at the end, there's 33% of the people that started that are here at the complete end. And from what I've seen, this is across the board on YouTube channels. Whenever I get to see somebody else's, their, their, their numbers, their charts, their stuff, I see that I look at them and it, uh, why you don't you don't watch half of a sitcom or half a movie, do you? No. But anyway, that's why we celebrate the 33 percenters that are here at the end. Listen to me. Yap on. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. See you guys next week. Bye bye.